the praises of their Lord and they are not arrogant. They always keep their sights apart from the bed at midnight and call their Lord in fear and hope and despair from where I have given them. So in these words, Allah is praising you, dear brothers and sisters. Those who perform sajda, Allah is praising here. Subhanallah, bihamdi. And in a verse in Surah Al-Fat, Allah specially praises the Sahaba for performing sajda. And for your kind information, performing sajda was one of the major attributes of Sahaba. Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'in. When they get time, they used to make long sajda. And Allah says in Surah Al-Fat, Muhammad Rasulullah, وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشِدَّاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَّارُ رُحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ تَرَاهُمْ رُكَّعًا سُجَّدًا يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانَ سِيمَاهُمْ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ مِّنْ أَثَرِ السُّجُودِ Allah says, Muhammad is the messenger of God. And those who with Muhammad, I mean the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet, they are very severe against the disbeliever and compassionate to each other. And then Allah said, O Muhammad, tarahum rukkaan sujada. O Muhammad, when you see them, you find them, they are bowing down. They are prostrating themselves to their Lord. And they are seeking the pleasure and satisfaction of their Lord. Seemahum fi wujuhihim min athari sujood. The brightness are seen in their faces are from the mark of their sajda, from the trace of of the sajda, if you perform salah five times in a day, if you make long sajda, usually you have a black mark here, the mark of sajda, right? You get my point, what I'm saying? If you perform salah regularly, and you perform tahajjud sometimes, and you spend long time in sajda, then usually you will get a black mark here. Allah is talking about this. Atharu sujood. The characteristics, the attributes of the Sahaba, most of the time, in their prayer time, they are in sajda, bowing down, prostrating to the Lord. They have this physical mark. But few scholars, they have disputes like Mujahid, one of the greatest tabi, he states that this is not the physical mark. It refers to the khushu, humility. Anyway. In this verse, what you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specially praises the companions of the Prophet alayhi salam, the Sahaba. He praises us, those who offer sajda, and he specially praises in the Holy Quran the companions of the Sahaba because of their sajda, the prostration. And dear brothers and sisters, when we, in the state of sajda, our forehead is down, down to the earth. In the time of sajda, we are at the closest position to Allah. Allah says, "Kalla la tuti'hu wasjud waqtarib." O Muhammad, don't follow the instruction of Abu Jahl. Rather, you wasjud, perform sajda and waqtarib. Be closer to me. So, if you like to be closer to Allah, so do we like to be closer to Allah, dear brothers and sisters? The answer is yes or no? Yeah. We all like to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's our law, the master, the master of mankind. So if we would like to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are supposed to offer long sajda, dear brothers and sisters. Allah says, وَسْجُدْ وَقْتَدِ Very short formula. Very precise formula. وَسْجُدْ وَقْتَدِ Prostrate. Perform sajda and be closer to me. Very simple formula. And a hadith narrated in Sahih al-Muslim, Prophet Islam said, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبَدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدْ فَأَكْثِرُ فِيهِ الدُّعَى The nearest a sovereign can be to his Lord is in his position of sajda. So in the time of sajda, we are at the nearest position to Allah. So Prophet Islam said, فَأَكْثِرُ فِيهِ الدُّعَى Make as much as dua as you can. As much supplication as you can. Because you are at the very closest position to Allah. Try to use the time. Try to utilize the moment. So this closeness actually, you can ask me that I'm prostrating. So I don't feel that. 
How I become closer to Allah? Where is He? Dear brothers and sisters, it's all about the feeling. You have to feel it. When you perform sajda, you have to feel it. You are down to the earth and you are, you are at the very closest position to Allah. When you are in sajda, whisper to Allah. Simply whisper to Allah. He's listening to you. Try to cry. He's watching the situation. He's watching the scenario of sajda. So the philosophy is here. I mean, when you are down to earth, your ranks is going up. Allahu Akbar. I mean, humility, humbleness. That's why Prophet Islam said, it's very high time to make dua. So take it as a reminder, when we are in sajda, especially in our salah of nafal and sunnah, we are supposed to uh, offer more sajda. MashaAllah. The audience are very energetic. And by the way, the breakfast was very nice. Nasilamak. Alhamdulillah. So dear brothers and sisters, coming to the point, sometimes we rush in sajda. We don't offer, offer the sajda in a proper way. But what we have to follow, we have to, we have to give more time in our sajda and to follow the proper system and manner of prostration. Because Prophet Sallallahu said, Umirtu an a'buda ala sab'ati a'ba. I have been ordered to perform sajda on seven bones. I repeat. Prophet Sallallahu said, I have been ordered to perform sajda on seven bones. Your two hands, two bones. Your nose and forehead is considered one bone. So total three. Your two knees, total five. Two feet, total seven. So we are supposed to perform sajda on our seven bones. So we have to keep it in our mind. And finally, sajda elevates our rank and shows our humbleness. We cannot be more humble than the position of sajda, right? We are down to the earth. And the interesting thing is when we whisper to the ground and it is listened in the arsh, Allahu Akbar. And the most lowest position, we call it in Arabic, Al-Asfal. Can you repeat after me the word Asfal? Allah says, Innal munafiqina fi al asfali minan nar. I mean, the place of hypocrites will be at the lowest part. So when we in Sajda, we are at the lowest part. I mean, we are in Asfal. But what we recite in the time of Sajda, can you say? Subhana Rabbi al A'la, Allahu Akbar. So A'la, the word A'la is the literally opposite of Al-Asfal. We say, Glory be to Allah, my Lord, the Most High. So if we are in the down position, but we are at the lowest in position, but we are saying He's the high, He's the high, He's the highest. So Allah likes very much to see this scenario. We are in sajda, in the lowest position, but we are pronouncing and stating that He's the highest. He's the highest, He's the highest, subhanAllah. And you will find a lot of medical benefits. Due to the time constraint, I don't want to... Uh, discussed in detail here. Just one thing I want to share precisely that in sajda, your brain position becomes lower than your heart. Your brain is lower than your heart. So you get more bl blood supply. It will give you a very good effect on your memory, in your vision, in your hearing. That's why Professor Islam used to offer long sajda, very long. Ummul Mu'min and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says, Prophet Islam used to prolong his prostration up until that extent someone can recite 50 Quranic verses, 50 Quranic verses. Allahu Akbar. So can you can you assume, I mean, the duration of one sajda of our Prophet? How many minutes? Can you assume, please? 10 minutes? 15 minutes? Every single sajda of our Prophet Islam used to take 15 minutes. One sajda time, you can recite five zero Quranic verses. Allahu Akbar. And he also advised us to take relaxation. No rush, no rush in sajda. He said, Thumma usjud hatta tatma inna sajidan. He was teaching a sahabi how to pray. When he came to the area of sajda, he said, don't rush. Usjud hatta tatma inna sajidan. Get the relaxation, get the healing. And there will be the final trial of sajda in the day of judgment. Not only in dunya, there will be a final trial of sajda. Allah will order the entire human being prostrate right now. So we, alhamdulillah, 
we prayed five times in a day, we will be able to prostrate to Allah. Alhamdulillah. Say Alhamdulillah. That day, inshallah, we will be able to perform sajda in front of our Lord. But the people, those who didn't offer sajda, their backbone will be very tight. Allah will make their spinal cord like an iron cord. They cannot even bend their backbone. They won't be capable. They will not be capable to perform sajda that day. Allah says, يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقٍ وَيُدَعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ That day the sheen will be exposed. The sheen will be exposed. Allah will call them to prostrate. Give sajda to me. They cannot do this. So dear brothers and sisters, let's prostrate to Allah before we become unable to prostrate Him. And the final word, Finally, and most importantly, dear brothers and sisters, sajda increases our attachment with our Lord. Prostration, sajda increases our relationship to our Lord. So do we need a good relationship with Allah? Yes or no? Yeah, we need it. We need a very good relationship with Allah. So to overcome all the challenges we face from the very beginning, I'm I'm hearing the word challenges, challenges, challenges. So, to overcome all the challenges we face in our daily life, of course we have to make a very good relationship and attachment with our Lord Allah. And sajda is the solution. It is the secret formula. Yeah. This is the time to interact with Allah. Private conversation with Allah. This is the high time to make dua. So if you face any difficulties, settle with your Lord before you settle with the people. You're facing problem in your academic career, settle with your master, the master of mankind, then settle with your department of the university. You're facing problem in your business career, settle with Allah first. Then you discuss in your business area. You're facing problem in your family, in your society, settle with Allah first.